Hey guys, this is uh, Zach. I'm the head of marketing for Sherry Johnson Coaching. And this is our very first um, live Q&A segment that we're doing for Academy members and Playbook members only. And i um, really excited and happy that we have our first guest who uh, Sherry actually interviewed last month or so. His name's Sean Everett. And um, you can listen or watch the interview that Sherry did with him on our podcast. You know, search all podcast platform for Sherry Johnson podcast or go to youtube.com slash Sherry Johnson. Um, so, Sean, thanks for being with us today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so let's just give a look, people some of your background. I know you're you're you live in Las Vegas, right? So I'm just outside of Las Vegas. So I was actually born and raised in Vegas. Uh, and then about two years ago, we were like, you know what? And this was like literally two weeks before all the COVID stuff hit. We were literally like, we want to go to a small town. We had a vacation home in a small town. It's called Caliente, Caliente Nevada. We all call it Caliente, right? <laughs> but uh, it's about two to two and a half hours outside of Vegas. And so we moved up here about two years ago and just loving it, man. I think we were built for the small town life, you know? Yeah, I'm in Philadelphia, but I think in the next couple of years, I'm probably going to go to a smaller town. Yeah, we got three inches of snow last night. So oh, it's wow. crazy. We got wild turkeys running around outside, deer walking through the streets. So different feel than Vegas, man. We love it. <laughs> Um, so also to give some background, so you, your wife's an agent, right? And you used to be an agent. Are you still an agent? So my wife used to be an agent. Um, I was actually an agent. I'm still an agent right now. Um, the only reason my wife got her license was because I was going in for brain surgery. And so I had to crash course her on real estate to take over in case I didn't make it or whatever. Right. We were just making sure. Um, and so she got her license and then she ended up helping me, uh, kind of blow our business up when we got back. And I don't even remember the whole year that I got back from that. It was kind of a, a blur, but, uh, but yeah, so we, we started, I've been in, been licensed since 08. Um, and we started a team, we got up to about 24 agents and just were cranking. Um, and then I started having some side effects from the brain surgery and basically got to a point where I had to eliminate any and all stress possible. Uh, couldn't really do a lot of showings, couldn't really go on listing appointment stuff. My, uh, my eyes would be bouncing headaches and stuff. And so uh, I started, started the marketing thing, which we were, our, we already had a, an academy that we were rolling with, with people. And it kind of just rolled into me helping everybody and, uh, just kind of kept going as it is now. And so it's a lot less stressful for me. It's a lot more fun. I love helping agents get leads and close deals and all that good stuff, you know, versus me having to do it. <laughs> so. Great. Well, Hey Lynn, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Zach. I'm the head of the marketing department for Sherry. Um, so I'm filling in for Sherry today. We have our guest, yeah. is Sean. And Hi, um, Lynn. I love your crown molding. That is beautiful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Love that house. Thank you. <laughs> so, so is it just the three of us on this? Who else is? Uh, so we sent out the invite and, you know, hopefully people will show up. But this is yeah. to your benefit because now you have the floor. Well, you know, we have I don't I don't use Pinterest, to be quite honest. So I just kind of logged on thinking, let me maybe I'll learn something new. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on social media. I know that's the bad thing nowadays. Um I, I you mean, can ask me whatever questions you got. Okay. I, I'd love to answer them for you. I got a whole bunch of stuff stored up here. Oh, well, that's good. Um, social media, I do a little bit of Instagram. I'm more Instagram, some Facebook, um, which is maybe more, you know, my age or whatever. I know people are getting away from all the Facebook. Um, but I just seem to find that with all social media, Unless you've got this huge crowd behind you, no one's really looking at what you're doing. You, you know, know that's so you have to spend so much time just getting people to read your blogs or look at your. I'm, I, I just think email. I, I still do email, and I believe it or not, I do snail mail. And yeah, I, I had a great business last year. Yeah, um, no, snail mail is the bomb if you do it right. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, I, I have a marketing out. company that I work with, and so they do my, they send out, and it's I, I I'm targeted to certain areas, 
and it seems to work. Yeah. So, um, I picked up an $880,000 property last year, earlier this year off of a newsletter. And that was strictly from just my monthly newsletter that goes out. And that was somebody that I represented the seller. These were the buyers, but because they got my newsletter every month, they thought of me and not their other agent, you know, so I, that, I love you send mail. out through your social media, your newsletter. No, I actually mail it. So I'll, oh. I'll actually, uh, three columns is how we do it. So mm -hmm. one column is basically the market update and what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, another column is about us as a family, because all of our clients always like to see what we got going on. And then a third column is literally something that's coming up, whether it's a father's day, mother's day, Christmas, you know, something to yeah. do in right. the area and then market stats. And that's literally, we just send it straight out. Uh, sometimes we'd include like a little magnet business card if it was a new person. Mm -hmm. um, or if it was, you know, a lot of times during Christmas, we send out little gifts as well. But yeah, just from staying in front of people like that. I mean, that was a very, I mean, very no matter what you do, that. that's true. Uh, it's, yep. and it's the same everywhere. It's face to face, no matter yep. what you do. For sure. Face to face it, on the computer or face to face. Yeah. You know, street. I mean, I, I like, I mean, that's how you're going to get business. Um, Can I ask you what you do on Facebook and how you use it? Just I, I don't, I do very little bit on Facebook. Gotcha. Um, I'll put my grandkids on there and then in between there'll be my new listing or my new sale. Um, I do send it on Instagram also as well. And, I think, oh, I'm not, and I'm not really sure how many people are looking at this new listing. But then when I put my grandkids on there, all of a sudden I've got everyone's looking. So I'm thinking, well, if they're looking at my grandchildren, <laughs> they do see what I'm selling. Do you ever do yeah. your do you ever do stories on Facebook or Instagram? Oh, you know what? I was going to start because I know Sherry's big on video, and that's that's probably the one area I would like to start. As a, I mean, you have to pick something on social media. So, so, so much. try this, try this for just a little, little something. I've done this with algorithms and it actually works fantastic. So on your posting that you're regular posting, post your grandkids, post stuff going on at your house or just personal stuff, right? On your post, okay. put all your business stuff in your stories. So if it's a listing, put okay. it up in your stories. If it's a, a review of some sort, take a screenshot, post it in your stories. So put your business stuff up in your stories you'll notice that you'll have 20, 30 people like your post on Facebook, but you'll have four or 500 people watch your stories. It's absolutely insane. So and they'll start you, messaging you. Stories you directly. on Instagram or on Facebook? Instagram and Facebook. They both do stories. Yep. And it's very simple. It doesn't have to be a video. It could be a picture that you put that you put up there. Um, so like if you came across a really cool kitchen or bathroom or a pool or something, you know, you could throw it up there and you don't even have to say anything. Honestly, just even a picture, people will engage with it. You'll notice a lot more people watch stories than they even scroll through and look at their posts. It's kind of crazy, but that's how it works. So if you just play with it, try it for a week and put like three stories up a day for like a week and watch how much more engagement you get. Okay. It's interesting because um, yeah. a lot of times like I'm busy throughout the day with my personal things and then the, which I really could incorporate into business for yeah. instance, like I just had a wood floor guy over here. Yeah. Touching up my stairs before yeah. I get her. You could have given him a shout out on, on Instagram. Well, yeah, Facebook, and I could still know? do that with his yeah. business card or something. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's all good because then it shows people and that that's a story. That's a story, people. right? Yeah, for sure. So, Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And don't worry about your business page. Focus on your personal page. You'll get more. I, I just can't keep up with all that. Mm -hmm. This is page, this, and that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like I You'll just You'll get more engagement on your personal page all day long. Yeah. yeah, try try like three stories a day if you can. I will. And do it for a week and just watch what happens. I think you'll be surprised. Okay. Hey. Guys, I think a good transition because we kind of do have to talk about Pinterest a little yeah. bit. And and because Lynn doesn't use it, now would be maybe a good time to explain to her yeah. why her, her or her marketing team should be using it and how to use it. Because Lynn, I don't know if you know, Sherry recently interviewed Sean and on um, the podcast. And Sean has talked about how much business him and his team have gotten through Pinterest. So it's not just like a vanity thing. Like you actually can get business through it. So, um, yeah, because so, Sean, it, so like you were just saying about social media, right? So Pinterest is actually a search engine like Google, uh, not actually a social media. So it's based off of search terms. So when you put a post on Pinterest, uh, you know, you create a pin, which is literally just some text and an image. 
uh, you put links, you put keywords, you put stuff like that in there. And that's actually what people pull up. Um, so when they type something in on Pinterest, you'll come up. So if you're doing stuff about um, flooring, bathrooms, kitchens, uh, exterior of homes, anything like that, just like you were just saying mm -hmm. with the wood floor guy, you know, you could have a whole section of flooring on that stuff and you will come up. How do I time start something like that? Like, how do you what? How do I start something like that? Like, do I go to Pinterest and just to create, yeah, so just go another, to Pinterest creating create another account. account, right? Yep. It's just a free account. But this is the cool thing. When you put, when you create any of these accounts, you're putting your website in there. So that is essentially a backlink to your website. And okay. it's also called a citation, which is basically a business listing for your website, which is really, really good. It actually helps with your organic rankings. It'll actually help you go up. But a lot of people use Pinterest to just get ideas on things. You know, they'll get ideas right. on, on, you know, something to redo their kitchen. Or if they're like, hey, I want to do a, a white kitchen or I want to change my countertops or anything along those lines, they go to Pinterest or if they're trying to learn how to do something. Right. So a lot of people that I've seen actually have really, really good success on Pinterest is actually doing how to's in the real estate world. So like if they have a contractor there and somebody's working, like you just had a guy working on wood floors, right. they literally see what he's doing, do a quick little video, or even take a couple pictures of what he's doing and explain what he's doing. Like people wig out over that kind of stuff of learning how you to You have to make it like 30 seconds because anything longer than that, people get, they're not interested. Yeah. And even a couple pictures. So a lot of people will even just do a picture or a side by side where it's like, you know, before and after kind of thing, and then explain what it is, you know, okay. um, and you can even, you can that. even link those pins back to a YouTube video if you have like a listing, right? So right. a lot of stuff that you can do with it is extremely cool, but it is search-based through keywords, just like Google. Oh, the other thing is, Lynn, too, is whatever you post on Facebook and Instagram, you can post on Pinterest, too. So yep. it's not you have to spend a lot of extra time making new stuff. You just have to post what you're posting here on Pinterest. Do it once and then just tap on the... Yeah, so the, the best thing is literally if you got, if you put a post on Facebook today... Don't use that same post on Instagram today or Pinterest today. Push that out a couple days. So take that same post and put it on Instagram in like two days or Pinterest in two oh, days. Oh, okay. That and just take one. your same content and kind of spread it, it saves out. time. Exactly. Because it's already okay. done, right? Okay. And then it's all good. It's still good content. But it, it you, you're you going to have certain people that follow you on Instagram, certain people follow you on Pinterest, certain people follow you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're never usually following you all on the same platforms. Just like you said, you know, you... You like Instagram more, Facebook more, like certain people. Because I just think preference. it's user friendly. Yeah, exactly. And so you're never really going to hit the same audience. And if you do, it's going to be a very small amount of people that you hit on all those right. different platforms. So that's kind of the way to spread out the content and then have more content to use. Okay. Yeah. I will do that. I will, I will definitely try that. For so sure. Actually, got some questions ahead of time. I think this would be a good question right now. Yeah. Uh, the question is uh, from Sarah S. She said, how do you network with the community using Pinterest? So, you know, if you're in Las Vegas, how do you network to people in Las Vegas through Pinterest? Yeah, so it's all geo-targeted, geolocated, right? So you can find people in the same area, but then it's also with the uh, followers. So you can go follow more people that are in your area. And the majority of the time they follow you back, just like Instagram. Um, and then if you have a lot of good content, you're going to get those followers in those areas. So as you're putting stuff in, you can incorporate zip codes, you can incorporate targeting, stuff like that. Um, that's definitely the way to go. So if you're just starting out, though, you want to go follow a bunch of people to get those follows back and start building up that uh, that audience right away. And you can literally go look, you can type in your area. So like, you know, for instance, Las Vegas, you know, you could say Las Vegas kitchens, Las Vegas pools something along those lines. And you're going to have a whole bunch of boards that come up, pins that come up, and then you can go to those people's profile and follow them. So how, let's say, you know, someone like Lynn, who she's busy, she has someone on her team, she has a marketing company. How do you make it? How do you kind of streamline this? You literally just you post it on Facebook, post it on Pinterest at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would do them on separate times just so, um, because a lot of times too, if you're posting the same thing, like you have those um, the those platforms, right? Like uh, Hootsuite or something that you can post to everything at the same time. Um, that hurts your algorithms when you do that. Um, you can have stuff scheduled out, but if you have the same thing going out to a bunch of different platforms at the same time, 
they target it by dates and stuff. And so their algorithms don't necessarily like that. So if you spread it out a little bit, then you're totally good to go and it's going to make a bigger difference. Um, and then as you're posting stuff, you know, you might want to put, you know, Facebook's not quite as big on hashtags as Instagram is, right? Um, I right. still like to throw a couple hashtags on Facebook, but and that's, Instagram, is that, put a bunch. The hashtag, that's just something you create yourself, hashtag. Yeah, so it's literally... Hashtag. Yeah, and, and you can find a lot of like the, the viral hashtags, the ones that are going, you know, super, super high. So like on Instagram, literally you there's can. a spot in there. You can look up you by hashtag Google, that, Google, Instagram hashtags or something. Yeah. You literally on your, on your Instagram profile, you can search by hashtags and it'll show you how many people have attached to that hashtag. So then you'll know if it's a big one or not, and which ones that you can use. Cause okay. if you use the bigger ones. It's going to make a difference, but, um, same thing with Pinterest, you know, they're, they like links, uh, they like content. So Pinterest is really, really good on content versus, you know, you definitely could throw some hashtags in there, but Instagram is going to be the hashtag winner as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Huh. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely use your, uh, your town and your cities too, for sure, Lynn, like uh, yep. you know, Philadelphia. So if I use a hashtag, I always want to hashtag Philadelphia, you know, okay. South Jersey, whatever, like the surrounding just- let me write some of this down because I, I kind of ran in from some errands. and uh... Yeah, I would definitely suggest, you know, using a hashtag with your location for sure. Yeah, and then also even, you know, you throw the hashtag in there, but you can also do the location by itself, right? So like if you're putting a post up, you can actually target where you're at. So like for real estate agents, it's really important if you're looking at specific areas and you want to dominate those areas, well, if you're taking pictures at the restaurants, the parks, everything in that area, and that's your location for that picture, if anybody's looking or searching for something in that location, you're going to come up because most people just put pictures up. They don't actually tag the location. Um, I've even seen people, so like your business, for instance, if you have a location for your office, you literally can tag that. So if you're doing stuff at the office or you're putting business stuff out and you don't necessarily have a neighborhood you're going to tag on there, you can just tag your office. So then it's associated with you. Okay. Well, I work out of two offices, so. Perfect. That, that gives you more exposure. Well, one is just more convenient because that's the town I live in, but the other office is, um, well, that's where my, my license is hung. That's yeah. yeah. I have the same thing. And I actually like that because with Google My Business, you can you can stretch out your uh, your presence a lot more when you got two locations to work with. So, so getting back to the hashtag. Yes. So with towns. So say like I just was just coming from a salon that's in Garnet Valley. So I could actually by giving them business, like put the name of the salon on hash. It would be hashtag contoured like the name of the salon or hashtag yeah. contoured the valley and then when you're doing the picture it'll ask it'll ask your uh, location of where okay. that's at and you can literally type in the name of the business and it'll come up um, and then you can click on that and then it's literally showing you at the salon with that picture so that that's always a good thing and then what you'll notice is as you're tagging other people They'll okay. actually follow you back. They'll they'll give you a shout out as well. So when you're going, you're giving some business, you get business back. Okay, gotcha. Up, uh, perfect. Okay, that I see. I feel more comfortable doing that, giving the businesses, local sure. businesses, some um, advertise as opposed to well, we're in Lynn's house. Look at the. Well, it's, you get a mix it in, so here. you're showing how much you support the community, and right. then you throw a little something that out there. Sense. Exactly. No, it's perfect. Good little mix. Everything can be turned into content. You know, once you're done getting your hair done, you could do a 10 second story or video, you know, shouting them out and tagging them. And then, you know, you build a relationship with them and chances are they'll probably share it because you're promoting their stuff too. So it's kind of like a win-win. Yep. Okay. So same thing with restaurants. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you can also say like, what's your favorite, your favorite dish and stuff there. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I think people forget social media is a great way to build relationships too. Yep. I guess that way 
like I'm always thinking, well, how do you get followers? Like, like how many friends do you have? Well, if you only have 10 friends or five friends, I mean, how many, but that's how you get followers by exactly like right. restaurants and so yep. people that may follow those restaurants or yep. they're going to see what you're all about. And if you're posting stuff and you're mixing some, some good content in there and you're posting right. what you do, people are going to naturally attract you and always make sure to put your personality out there. So whatever your personality is, just use your personality because you're going to attract those types of people. So, you know, I, I'm really, really big on that. I don't like to be fake or anything. And mm -hmm. I just, I talk to everybody the way I talk to my friends and my family. And I just, I'm just me and I attract those kind of people, you know? Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget about the social side of social media, not just about posting your listings. You know, you want to post sociable thing, you know, like you mentioned your grandkids and stuff like that. But I think you mix, if you mix in the community and local businesses, that's when you right. really take it to the next level. 100%. Yep. All right. I will do that. I'm so busy. I mean, I, I'm in all different businesses all day long, just doing personal things and Christmas things. And <laughs> yeah. that's my opportunity to, to just snap a picture or, and then yes. just send it off. Right. Well, you might, you might take a picture. Like, I don't know if you have any animals or something, but they might be doing I something do. really cute and you can take a picture. It doesn't mean you have to post it today. You could post it in a month. You know what I mean? But just fill your phone up with stuff that you can use down the road. Okay. I will. I will. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of social media meetings. Everybody says you yeah. have to do that. And I've, and I've had one on ones um, with. Keep it simple, with, right? Hey. Just do like one thing here, one thing there. And before yeah. you know it, it becomes routine. Good. Okay. Well, I'll have to let you know how that works out. Top of mind with people and by, you know, posting pictures of your animals and your grandkids you're on top of mind with people, but you're not selling or pushing, you know, so right. if you're constantly selling and pushing. People are going to tune you out, but yep. you show them your life and then you're on top of mind when they're ready to buy or sell, they'll remember you because of your social, because of your grandkids or your puppy or whatever. And that's another reason why stories are so good because they disappear after 24 hours. So you're not pushing sales, right? You're just throwing it out there, letting them know, and then it's gone versus a post is there forever until you delete it. So that's why stories are so amazing for business. Thank you. I think I've learned a lot. Yeah, for sure. Got any more questions there, Mr. Well, Zach? I'm pretty good. I think this is a good start. Anything else would be, you know, a little overwhelming. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've tried to go to my own kids and say, teach me this or teach me that. But they're like, they don't have the time. So oh, yeah. it's good. Thank My you. wife is like the Instagram queen. I swear oh, that girl, good. she can do social media stuff. She's the best, man. <laughs> She's awesome. Well, it was nice meeting you and Thank Zach, you. nice to meet you as well. I'm going to run. Thank you, Lynn. Have a Thank great you. day. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank sure. you. Bye-bye. Um, so, yeah, so we have a couple minutes left here, Sean. Uh, I do have a couple more Pinterest questions. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll do like one or two more and then we'll definitely – um promote your your website and stuff like that we'll tell people how we added your course but um let's see um so we have a good one from susan J. she says i've been using pinterest but i don't think i've got sales from it how do i actually get business from pinterest so one of the biggest things is what's your website right is do you have a good lead capture website um so like i like to use chime they got, you know, there's Chime, there's KV Core, Conversion, Follow Up Boss, there's uh, Real Geeks, right? You got all these different CRMs and websites and stuff. So my personal opinion is make sure you have a website that's got a good lead capture because what happens is every time you put a pin up, you make sure that it directs back to your website. So for instance, if you're, if you have a page about buyer guides or seller guides or something along those lines, make sure it directs back to the page for those buyer or seller guides, right? Or if you're promoting a neighborhood or a listing or something like that, make sure it goes back to the page. So, cause when you pull up Pinterest and you pull up that picture at the bottom, there's always the link of where that picture's going, where, where it's coming from, right? Always make sure it links back to your website on the specific page that it needs to be. So if you're doing a, you know, what's your home worth graphic, right? Send it to your, your home evaluation page where people can punch in their address and actually get a quick online value. Right. Something simple and easy like that makes a huge difference. You're driving traffic to your site. So the whole thing is, will you have people hit you up directly from Pinterest? Yes, but it's not as likely as them going to your website and actually start searching for homes, 
checking you out as an agent. So we had, I think our, our traffic was like 11% of our total traffic came from Pinterest, completely organic. And we were generating like four or 500 leads a month. I mean, it was insane. But to have 11% of that, which would be like what, 40, 45, um, literally be free leads from Pinterest, from posting is awesome. That's more leads than a lot of people get in a month, you know? Yeah, that's pretty incredible. I mean, people are going there anyway. So it's kind of like yeah. you should be there. And then once they're there, you have to kind of capture capture them while they're there, right? Well, the biggest thing that people, they, they mess up on when it comes to any kind of social media is they just scroll and screw around all day. I mean, I'm totally guilty of it on Instagram. If I sign a, if I find a, some funny stuff, I can't stop. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh my ass off the whole, whole time. You know, I can't help it. Um, but when you change your mindset and you're like, okay, I'm going to be on there to actually do something productive. It, it changes everything of how you're doing business because then everything you're doing is productive versus just scrolling and wasting time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just had a question pop in my head. I don't know. I didn't look into it. I don't know if you know, but I'm curious the demographic on Pinterest. I mean, is it mainly, you know, you would think it's, well, I don't know. I was going to say mainly. I got some stats right here actually for you, man. I was wondering if that was going to pop up or not. So, um, so let me, let me give you some, some stuff right here. So Pinterest is the number one used search engine on mobile devices. Okay. Over one third of American adults over the, over 18 years old use Pinterest. The average pin saved by a female is 158. 45% of women online use Pinterest. 17% of men online use Pinterest. 70% of Pinterest users are women, 30% are men. So you can see, obviously, it's geared more towards the ladies on, on Pinterest. 40% uh, of Pinterest users have a household income of over 100K. That is huge um, because that eliminates a whole lot of people that cannot qualify to buy. You know what I mean? 60% um, of households have children five and under. So you're looking at families that have a good amount of money, right? 50% um, of millennials on Pinterest have an annual household income of 75K plus. 50% of millennials say Pinterest inspired them to make their dreams come true. So if you're able to hit those millennials on first-time home buyers or something along those lines, I mean, that, that that's a big percentage of millennials saying that that's where they went to actually find some stuff and make it happen. And the last stat that I got right here is Pinterest generates 400% more revenue per click than Twitter and 27% more than Facebook. So basically Pinterest is the action takers, right? Pinterest is where people are going to actually make something happen, learn something, or to actually move forward with something versus sitting there scrolling because they're going there to find out about uh, redoing a bedroom or a bathroom. They're going there to find out what kind of homes are being built or a big backyard, something along those lines. And it's usually more affordable and easier for people to go buy a new place that has this stuff versus putting it in themselves, paying the cash, taking an equity line, something along those lines. Yeah. And the crazy thing is that I bet you that your competitors aren't on Pinterest, you know, that I bet. You oh yeah. It's not a normal thing for people to be on Pinterest, man. And if you look up, you look up your area, I guarantee you there's a couple of realtors on there that are absolutely crushing it. And more than likely, their complete business is from Pinterest. You know, I know some agents that got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers on Pinterest. And if you look at what they're pinning, you're like, gosh, I could so easily do that. <laughs> it's not rocket science, right? It's a matter of doing it. That's always the problem people have. Oh, what are they going to think of this post? Oh, what's somebody going to do with that? Who freaking cares, man? Then people are not paying your bills. So until you can go cash their freaking opinions at the bank, screw them. Who cares? Just put up a post and do it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, so we're wrapping it up here. So if there's one thing people can learn from this, hopefully, is that they should be on this. You know, we talked about how to use it. You can repurpose your content from other sites. Um, so there's really no reason why you shouldn't be on it. You know, if you're posting on the other sites, it's, it's easy to do. So, you know, you just have to do it. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Um, so guys, just to let you know, um, Sean has been gracious enough to give us not one, but two courses to add to the Academy, which we're adding that there should be there. Now we're going to send an email out to everyone, let them know they're live. 
Um, Sean has sent us a course about Pinterest and about ClickFunnels, which we didn't really get to get into today, maybe some other time, but ClickFunnels is all about landing pages and um, capturing people's emails and things like that. So you definitely want to check both of those courses out. Uh, on top of that, Sean has his own marketing agency. It's called Everett Marketing Agency. And uh, it's a pretty simple website to remember. Just go to everettmarketingagency.com. That's E-V-E-R-E-T-T marketingagency.com. Um, and then we're going to have in the, in the academy and on Playbook, we'll have Sean's contact information. Uh, he has a ton of other courses. He's a marketing genius. Uh, we have a link to his interview that Sherry did about a month ago. Um, so, Sean, is there anything you want to add or let people know? Yeah, um, hit me up. You know, I, I'd love I love doing strategy sessions with people, you know, because if there's something that I can do, my company can do to help you out. Um, you know, we're all about exposure and branding and just making sure that you get the the recognition and visibility that you need, you know, because if you got some big agents out there that are just crushing you, I could take a brand new agent that has no content at all. And I guarantee you within 90 to 120 days, you will dominate your area, if not less. Um, I've done it with lots of people. That's just how it works, you know. And if you want to just call and chit chat about your business and see how you can improve stuff and pick my brain, let's set something up. You know, I, I, I'll carve out 20, 30 minutes. No problem. I, I just like to chat with people. I like to help people. And if I can make it beneficial for me and them all the way around, I, it's a win win for everybody. And um, I just. I just like to meet people and share my knowledge. Yeah, guys, the best thing about Sean is that he has, you know, you have some coaches out here who aren't agents, never been agents, or people who have marketing agencies that aren't agents. And Sean and his wife are, were agents. They had a team. So he knows both sides of the equation. So you really get, that's really a benefit of working with Sean is that he is, was an agent himself. And he knows, you know, he knows what he's talking about. Know how to keep you out of trouble. I know how to save you a lot of time. If you want to start a team, I, I got a freaking plan that will put you two, three years ahead of where you would be doing it yourself. So you just, you let me know. I'd love to help you out. Great. So thanks guys for watching this. Um, so this is a brand new segment we're doing in the Academy in the playbook. We'll have it once a month and uh, we have someone next month and uh, maybe we'll have Sean on again in a couple months, but uh, Sean, I appreciate you taking out the time to do this. Absolutely. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate you, man. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching.